Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about my Bridgerton project and I said, I hate deadlines. I'm never doing this again. I have a photo retreat weekend thing coming up in about a week. So we're here again doing more speed sewing. So this time I'm going to be making a row à la Francais and I'm hoping to get this done in about five, six days. We'll see. That's including the pocket hoops and the petticoat and like the outer gown. I'm not doing any of the chemise or any of the other like underpinnings that you need for a row à la Francais. This is not going to be like a historically accurate photo shoot. This is going to be more of a like recovery Coco vibes kind of photo shoot. So for the fabric, I've got a little bit of an odd choice because we will be shooting this next to water. So I didn't want to use silk because water stains happen in silk and I didn't want to use polyester because you know environmental stuff and also it's gonna be June so uh, I don't want to deal with that so I thought that going for a polished cotton would be a good way to kind of mimic the luster of silk taffeta without actually using silk and that way if it gets wet it's not a big deal I have like a peachy pink cotton sateen that's hanging up and drying right now because I had to wash all like what, eight yards of it or something. And then for the petticoat, I'm gonna be using a cotton voile. This is not historically accurate, literally at all, but I thought it was pretty. And I thought it could be like a cute modern interpretation of Rococo having a petticoat that had this kind of border print on it and was, I don't know, very cute. I'm gonna be using J.P. Ryan's Robe à la Francaise slash Pet and Lair. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced that right, um, but I'm gonna be using that pattern for this whole thing along with guidance from the American Duchess sewing books. This border pattern runs along the selvage, so it is gonna be a cross grain drape. I don't usually like to do big pleated skirts on the cross grain because it does hang differently. The grain will hang a lot stiffer and will not pleat as nicely as a cross grain like pleat will. That's not really an option this time because if I want to use the border print as it is printed then I'm gonna have to do it like opposite of what you would normally do. So with all of that stuff out of the way I also want to introduce the sponsor for this video. So today's sponsor is a cat toy company. I think they're just a general pet toy company or pet supply company. So today's sponsor is Happy and Polly and Happy and Polly makes pet supplies. So we have a special surprise for you today. Baby Bat and Honey Bee also are getting a present of one of those cute cat trees. So if you've seen around on the internet those cute cat trees, okay. <laughs> if you've seen around on the internet those cute cat trees with like the lavender and the moons and stuff, that's the kind of stuff that Happy and Polly sells. We got the cat tree a little bit ago, but unfortunately arrived when we were out of town. So I'll be doing an unboxing this week and we can see how the cats like it. Are you excited for your present? Yes? Can you say thank you, Happy and Polly? Thank you. Thank you, Happy and Polly, for sponsoring this video. I'm super excited to open this cat tree. My main goal for today is to get the pocket hoops done, like the pannier, and have a really good understructure for me to build this Robe la Francais on top of it. I'm also hoping to get the petticoat done today because I am using like one big length of fabric. It should go a little bit faster and all I really have to do is hem it and pleat it. So I think I should be able to get that done today. I do have a bunch of doctor's appointments today, so that's gonna cut into my time, but those are my goals. Maybe we'll get a little bit farther. Or maybe we won't get that far at all, but we'll see. Okay. The book I'm using is The American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking, and they have a whole lot of really good tutorials in here, but for now, I'm going to be sticking to these side hoops. Basically, it's pretty straightforward. All you do for this is you hem all the seams, and then you add boning channels, side ties, pleat everything up, add a waistband, and then theoretically that should be it. So I'm gonna get to tracing this pattern out on real paper and like making it to scale, so then I can just use it to cut out my fabric. <laughs> Thank you. 
of the Robot La France project. I was not able to get as much done yesterday as I wanted to because my doctor's appointment are really late. <laughs> I was really only able to get the side hoops done, so hopefully today I can get the petticoat done and get to the like base mock-up phase. I don't. No, no. Okay, you can keep looking out the window. So before I start the whole thing, I don't really have time to do a full mock-up of everything and also that would kind of be a waste of fabric. So I'm gonna do just a mock-up of the under bodice part. I have two pairs of stays that I think will work for this project. So I'm going to try the mock-up on with both of them and see which one needs fewer alterations. And that's how I'm gonna pick which stays I'm using. So in this book, they show really teeny tiny how you take measurements over the hoop so that you can get the right length for the petticoat. So I had Micah help me with that. So my front and back uh, are not quite the same. The back is a little bit longer. And then the left and right weren't quite the same either, but we're just gonna estimate. So I've made it so that there's a one inch hem off the ground. Oh, maybe it should be higher because it looks like in this picture, it's quite a bit higher off the ground. I guess the petticoat's supposed to be a little bit shorter than the actual gown, but I, um, I'm gonna just make it so maybe it's like two inches off the ground because this looks like it's a good like four or five inches off the ground and that's just it's too tall for me i like my shoes to be covered because i'm not going to be wearing period accurate shoes at all basically what i do with those measurements is i just cut it off the top and that's it it's fairly simple <laughs> Um, but before I sew everything together, I wanted to talk about the pattern a little bit. My bust size is correct for this pattern, but the waist size was not, so I took a little bit off the waist. The other thing that I did that is just kind of going completely off the rails with this, I think normally they expect you to make it out of something a little bit uh, softer. If you look at the American Duchess book, there's this part here where it shows that there's a little opening left in the back. I think that instead of doing an opening, they're assuming that this fabric will be soft enough that you can just pull it together and it's not gonna cause a lot of bulk. If you do that with Cotille, it's gonna be very bulky underneath. All the folds will cause some problems. So what I've done instead is I have opened this up. The other thing I think I'm gonna do is rather than having ties, I think I'm gonna lace it because personally I, think that I can get it laced more evenly than I can get it tied. I'm gonna stick a bone in here and then I'm gonna do grommets. I probably should have left a larger seam allowance there so that I could have a little bit more stabilization for the grommets, but oh well, too late. The other thing I wanna note is I said before that I don't like it when patterns do this. When you are making patterns, all of your pattern pieces should be for the same side of the body. <laughs> They did not do that. So one side has to be upside down to match up with the other side. And it's just, that's bad pattern making. Don't do that. <laughs> Especially if you're selling your patterns for $27. The other thing was that when I was originally putting these together, I've now made a bunch of alterations. So you can't see the original, but when I put the original pieces without any alterations together to match on the side seam, it wasn't trued. You guys have heard me rant and rave about truing patterns before, especially like red threaded doesn't seem to true her patterns in every size 
for her corsets and stays and neither does this pattern. It wasn't like as drastic a drop between the pattern pieces as red threaded are but still it wasn't true and I don't understand why these people keep charging so much money for patterns that aren't true. <laughs> Okay, this is not the most flattering lighting. I'm kind of shiny and it's been a day. Uh, I had to get blood taken today to do some allergy tests for stinging insects and I almost passed out. So that was fun. Had to lay down on the floor of the bathroom for a little while. And then I forgot another appointment that I had later and didn't remember until two hours after I was supposed to go to it. So cool, we're doing good today. But at least petticoat is done, mock-up is done looks pretty good I think. I'm gonna put that on and hopefully it fits. <laughs> maybe I need to let that out a little bit. I think maybe I have it laced, laced a little too tight just through the shoulders so I'm gonna give that a little bit more space. But yeah that fits my back a little bit better. You can see I have it laced up back here. I think I'm gonna have to pull the lacing in a little bit at the waist but other than that I think it's okay. I think the stays that I'm wearing make my waist lower than it actually is. So like normally I think my waist is kind of up here but these push it way down here. Normally I have to shorten the waist on things but for this it seems like I would have to lengthen it by like two inches which seems incorrect to me. Maybe if it sat a little lower, that would also help this as well because there's a little bit of gaping right here. It's not too bad. It seems fine actually. It seems to be hitting pretty much exactly where the waist of these stays are. I just need to make sure that it will actually want to sit there forever. Making me look like I have a really long torso and usually I have kind of a short torso. Okay, I think this looks okay. I'm gonna go walk around the house a little bit and see if it will stay there. If not, then I'll try it on with the other stays. If it does stay there, then I'll just use this and you'll see me cutting fabric next. I lied, okay, so I walked around in this and it's just fine. The only thing that I wanna fix is that this is gapping a little bit along the neckline. So I think what I'm gonna do, instead of taking a dart here, which I've seen some people do, I am instead going to take like just an eighth of an inch off of this side of the shoulder seam on just the front piece. So that should lift all of this up and make it so that it stays a little bit tighter to my body. of my project I spent pretty much all of yesterday cutting fabric so I didn't record most of it <laughs> but before I get started for today I want to take this opportunity to unbox some stuff before I do anything can you say hello so this video is really kindly sponsored by Happy and Polly they are a cat toy company and they sent me this really awesome cat tree we can't find baby bat right now so honeybee's gonna have to do until baby bat feels the fomo and feels the need to come into my room i'm super excited i'm gonna do an unboxing for you guys and i'm going to see how long it takes me to build this and then we'll see how the kitties like it oh there's baby bat baby bat oh there she is all right well we rearranged this corner of my sewing studio so that i could place the cat tree right by the window Abby and holly also gave me a 10 percent off coupon code so that you can buy your own favorite fancy cat tree for your children, cats, or if there's any other things that you like from their website, it will also work on those. You don't have to just buy cat trees. That coupon code is MIN10, I believe. I will throw that up somewhere around here and I'll also put it in the description and put their link in the description so you can go check out their website and you totally should because all their stuff is very cute. Are you going to help me build this? Hello. It's cute hammock stringy things. It's for you. Okay, lots of cylinders here. Scratchy pole. What do you think, guys? I go. I'm just gonna chill here. That's fine. Okay. Honey Bee likes the box it came in. Thanks, Happy and Polly, for the great box. <laughs> and Baby Beth found the catnip. Nope, that's not right. Hello? Okay, so what is this? What are you doing? Yeah, alright. 
No. Why do they have three pink legs? Oh, okay, I see, I see. So the extra blue. Oh. You all right, bud? Hey, no. Does it matter which way these are oriented? There's one in the middle. Okay, so these ones are... There you go. We attached it. <laughs> so confused. What are you doing? Look at that silly boy. This is a 10 out of 10. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you like that little platform? Oh, what a cute girl! Oh. Do you like it? You guys like it? So that took us a couple hours to build. It definitely helped to be able to look at a picture of it on the website. So if you're Oh God, now I've got cat fur all over my face. If you're building this yourself, the diagram on the box is like kind of helpful, but it's not color coded. Looking at it on the website really helped to know like which one of these rods went on like which part of this. So if you're making your own, do that. Um, also, I'm like sitting on it right now and it's holding my weight. So it's very sturdy and it'll be great for cats because I weigh a lot more than a cat. It took us about two hours to build, but uh, we kind of messed up a couple of times. So that's on us. <laughs> Basically, if you can build Ikea furniture, you can build this. It's very simple. It just took a little bit of time because uh, it takes us a lot of time to build Ikea furniture too. And I think they like it. I think that they're having fun on it even though we bribed them with treats to get them on it, once they realized that this was their toy and not our toy, they were very into it and like baby bats having a good old time, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, so 10 out of 10 would recommend. You should totally get your own. Thank you so much to Happy and Polly for sponsoring this video. The, I'm so excited for the cats to use this and they're so excited. I think it'll be a great place for baby bat to look out the window and also honeybee, but he's in here a little bit less. With this cat tree, she's able to get a much higher vantage point, which she always likes. She likes to be like, I height with me and now she is. Do you like being tall? <laughs> Once again, if you'd like to purchase your own giant pastel cat tree, you can at happyandpolly.com. I'll have the link down in the description. And you can use my code MIN10 to get 10% off of your order. So you totally should. Please check them out. I'm super happy with this. And now I can start putting the Robala Francais together because it's just sitting in pieces. I had to move the whole thing out of the way to make space for this, but I have no regrets. This is a much better use of this space than my dress form and shelves. Why are you like this? <laughs> Oh baby. <laughs> Yesterday I was able to get the entire lining done and I got everything cut out. So today I'm hoping that I can get pretty much the entire base dress done. That's the plan at least. So if I can get the entire base dress done today, then tomorrow I can focus on the ruffle embellishments and the stomacher. We're gonna try to work really hard and get stuff done today. The next part after the lining is to finish the underflounces. So that's kind of like the lace uh, engagements that you see poking out from under like the dress fabric sleeves. So to make those, I've got some white fabric and I've got some lace. I didn't have any lace that was wide enough to just use by itself. So this is gonna get just like seamed onto the hem of the flounces here. It's gonna do a narrow rolled hem on these and then I'm gonna stick the lace right on there and then they get put into the sleeves. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna go a little bit out of order and I'm gonna do the back pleats first. Instructions say don't panic, which I think uh, is going to induce more panic. If you look at these instructions, it says everywhere you have to fold it. So it's very clear. 
did mark everything on the back, not the front. So there's that, but I think it'll be fine anyways. So that's one side done. Pretty sure that's how it's supposed to look. First, I'm going to baste all the way across this, but first, first, I have to do the other side. Okay, I still did this wrong. They give you actual instructions and I just completely did not do that. So we're gonna start over. Thankfully, now I have all these creases in there. That should make it a little bit easier. So it says to do pleats two and one first. So I will go ahead and do that. The way I was doing it, um, it would have had pleats one and two on the outside and I guess pleat six is supposed to be on the outside. So I kind of, eh, I think I just did it all wrong. Got those pin in. Um, I'm gonna look to see how far down I should be. Okay, those are stitched so we can move on to three and four. There's three and four, so I'm gonna stitch those down too. And the last two are five and six, so <laughs> almost there. Okay, I was apparently not supposed to stitch these down by machine. That's okay, I'm gonna stitch the rest of it by machine because mm, nobody's gonna get this close to me that they can see it. Okay, today is day five, I think. So I was hoping to get this whole thing done today. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I'm gonna still have to be working on embellishments tomorrow, but that's okay. My goal today is to get the sleeves completely done and set, and then to get the pleats in and the lining in. And then hopefully tomorrow, all I have to do is the stomacher and the embellishments. Got the innermost layer of sleeve ruffle on there. So I'm just gonna add these on there and that's, that's it. We're gonna keep going, all right. Completing this is more trouble than it's worth. I'm just gonna go gather these. trim all along the front edge of the gown. So that'll be covering all of the stitching here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch it by machine. Okay, this part isn't in the instructions, but I don't want this armhole to just be unfinished. So I'm gonna pin around the whole armhole and then just overlock it so that none of these have raw edges. That's what it looks like when the serging is all done. It's just nice and clean and it's not like historically accurate at all, but we're going for speed here. So the last part that I'm gonna be doing, I have to tack it, I guess it's kind of tacked from the serging, but I'm gonna tack it at the top of the side seam here and then also where the pleats open up down here. I think maybe I'll also try to hem this because there's a lot of hem that needs to happen, but Yay, I am on schedule today. <laughs> That's great news. All right, day six, we're finishing the Robella Francais today. Basically, all I have left to do is the trim and the stomacher, and I think that's it. I wanna make a bow to put on the back because they did that in the Marie Antoinette movie and I thought it was very cute, so I'm gonna be doing that. I have to add another layer of lace to the sleeves because you can see like the fabric that I attached the lace to and it's not cute, so gonna fix that. 
But other than that, we're almost done. Yay! I have made this little ruffle template. I copied this from the American Duchess book, and so I'll just place it on the fabric and trace around this. I made it out of poster board because then it won't get messed up after I do it a couple times. And then I'll just take my scallop pinking shears and go around the stuff that I traced. <laughs> Once again, I'm coming at you real sweaty because it is very hot outside. <laughs> My skirts are also really damp because the grass was very wet. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this short so I can go change out of this. Um, but I think overall this went super well. I was very concerned because I had a limited amount of time to finish this, but between getting back from visiting parents to going to this photo retreat was only about a week and a half so I had a week and a half to finish like three costumes and I it, I did it wow good job me and it wasn't as painful as trying to crunch like all of the Bridgerton stuff so that was good because uh, it was all stuff that I was like very familiar with making and kind of can crank out like very quickly so this was probably the most ambitious of those projects it, it still turned out well so I'm very happy I did make stuff a little bit easier on myself I didn't have to do any embellishments on the skirt like the petticoat part because uh, I chose an embellished fabric so it's got like a border print so I didn't want to cover up that pretty border print anyways even if this is super not uh, accurate at all historically I thought it embodied the spirit of the Marie Antoinette Sofia Coppola movie so uh, pocket hoops went together pretty quickly uh, that actually only took like a few hours so would definitely recommend the American Duchess tutorial in their book I ended up using my 18th century stays from the red threaded Georgian stays video so check that out well I don't really like those stays on me by themselves they worked as a really good foundation for this dress so I am pleased I ended up making those in the end so yay great for Things that I would change, um, if I had been able to take a little bit more time, I could have fit the stomacher and everything like underneath it a little bit better and made it so that it fit like really, really perfectly. Right now it fits fine, like it's not, I don't think it's noticeable to anybody besides myself, but sometimes the tops of this thing, like the under 
bodice, I guess, kind of poke out the top. So I just got to adjust it occasionally. Also, would like to add more embellishments to the outer skirt. Uh, right now, I just have this little thing of ruffled trim on the very edge. And I figured that was sufficient for this shoot because a lot of the other people in this shoot were wearing dresses from Louis Bourbon on Etsy. So those are pretty much just embellished with the line of trim along the front edge. So I figured I wouldn't be out of place if I did that. Uh, and everybody matched very lovely, so it turned out just fine. Not counting the pocket hoops, which were a day in themselves because that was a super busy day, but the entire dress took about five days to make, so that was really great. That went really quickly, much faster than I thought I would be able to put together a Robala Francais. It's been a project that I've wanted to do for a really long time, and I thought that it was going to be a really huge undertaking. Probably would if I did a lot more detailing on it and like did all the trim and stuff that is found on typical Robala Francais, but I, you know, with my shortcuts, I was able to crank it out in five days, so awesome, pretty short project. The other thing that I wanted to show you guys, which you probably saw in the reveal, is my cute little bow. It's gotten a little bit floppy because this sat in the suitcase for a couple days. I saw that detail from the Marie Antoinette uh, Sofia Coppola movie and I was like, that's so cute. I want to do it. So I did. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm really happy with how this turned out and now my toes are wet because I'm stepping on this very wet hem. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you again to Happy and Polly for sponsoring this video. You can get 10% off of their website, which I will link down in the description with the code MIN10, M-I-N-10. So please check them out. I hope you guys enjoyed my first ever sponsorship. I thought it was appropriate because it was a big present for Baby Bad and Honey Bee. <laughs> I know you guys love them so much. So I thought that this was a very appropriate sponsor for my channel. This cat tree is like beautiful. The cats are obsessed with it. It's now been built and done for, I don't know, maybe a week or two now and they are obsessed with it. They like want to play on it constantly. All the little like hanging bits and bobs, they just go feral for it. So <laughs> it's really great. I'm so happy that I was able to provide for my children in this way. So thank you so much Happy and Polly for sponsoring this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps support me and my channel and uh, is now helping me get sponsors. So that's cool. Thanks guys. Uh, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you like how this turned out, if you have any suggestions for other embellishments that I could add that wouldn't like make it too busy, then let me know in the comments. Or if you want to see me make another Robo La Francais sometime or something else. I don't know. I really want to make a chemise a la rent. So that's going to be like my next French court kind of costumey thing. Uh, but that'll be eventually in the future. And of course, if you want to see that project, eventually and other projects that I'm working on, then please subscribe. I'd be happy to have you and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye. Hey Minji. Hi. Hi.